We have here a few slides on exotic options, not too much, because with exotic options, most of them, the most popular ones, it just gets mathematically more uh, complicated to compute the prices, uh, but the economics and the ideas behind it are still the same. Well, the most popular barrier options uh, are, uh, sorry, most popular exotic options are, are barrier options, uh, probably. Uh, these are options which are like call and put options, but uh, they pay only if the price on the underlying reaches a certain level, a certain barrier before maturity, or sometimes they don't pay if it re reaches that level before maturity. So they depend on whether a maximum or a minimum of the stock price during the lifetime of the option has gone uh, below or above a certain barrier. Why are they popular? Well, they are just cheaper versions of standard call and put options. Why cheaper? Because they will, they will pay uh, um, as much as the call option, let's say, uh, most of the time, but not if the stock price has gone over or below a barrier, which means it pays sometimes zero when the regular call option doesn't pay zero, pays positive. So it has to be it has to be cheaper because there are uh, there are outcomes in in which you will get less. Why would you buy such an option? Well, if you really believe that the uh, underlying price will not go uh, will not cross that barrier during the lifetime of the option, then it's cheaper for you to 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 buy uh, such an option. Mathematically, it's. Uh, Computing the, you, you have to know the, the distribu joint distribution, joint probability distribution of the stock price, let's say it's a, an option on stock, and uh, the maximum or the minimum of the stock price, which translates into knowing the joint distribution for Brownian motion or Brownian motion with drift and the maximum or the minimum of that Brownian motion with drift. This joint distribution is actually known, uh, and uh, there are, in fact, explicit formulas you can actually compute. If you integrate against the joint distribution, the payoff of the barrier option, you can actually compute the price in the black scholes merton model. You can find those, uh, those, I'm sure if you Google around, I think there is also a book with all possible black scholes formulas for all kinds of options. So if you Google around, I'm sure you can find uh, those formulas. Uh, this course is not at that high mathematical level that we will be computing uh, uh, those prices. I mean, mathematically, it's really just computing double integrals, not much more than that. Uh, but still, uh, it's, uh, it's not something we want to do in this course. There, there is one, one kind of a maybe interesting thing with the barrier options. They are... Uh, they may be hard to hedge using the standard Black Scholes idea. We haven't talked that much about hedging. That we will talk more in more detail later. But just to give you an idea uh, uh, wha where the difficulty is, let me try to draw here. So I'm just going to create a space here for... Uh, you don't have to look at this left-hand side. Uh, this is for later. Uh, so uh, let's look at the payoff of, uh, let's say, up and out barrier option, call option. What is up and out? I will, I will draw the picture. Hopefully, it's going to be clear. So a regular call option would pay 0 up to k at maturity. And then it would pay, it would pay uh, s minus k. An up and out barrier call option, there would be a barrier, let's call it here maybe B for barrier. And if the stock price ever goes above that barrier, the uh, payoff becomes zero again. In particular, at maturity, if the stock price is above the barrier, the payoff is in fact zero again. Okay? 
So at maturity, this is how it would look like. But it also becomes zero at, if at any time before maturity, the stock price goes above B. That, that's a classical barrier option. So if you actually compute the black Scholes price of this, it has to be some smooth function which, uh, as, as we get closer to maturity, it becomes closer to this discontinuous function, right? We have a jump here, right? Not only this is not smooth at K, but also has a jump at B. And uh, turns out, if you, if you compute the black Scholes formula for this type of option, uh, then close to maturity is going to be close to, to these thick red lines. Uh, so it's going to be maybe something like like this, um, going closer to here, but then it, ha then it has to get closer down to this guy. Uh, and, um, okay, so something like that. The problem is if, if your stock is close to maturity and going uh, and being close to barrier here, then you see here your delta of the option, which is the number of shares you have to hold, uh, is positive, 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 positive. And then it becomes suddenly hugely negative because you have to get down to zero. Now here where it's hugely negative means you would have to, you go from long positions in stock when you're hedging to uh, extreme short positions in the underlying. Okay? That can be very costly right, in terms of transaction costs the cost of trading, liquidity. So, and if your stock is going up and down, close to the barrier, below the barrier, but up and down, and then you may have to go from long to short, uh, high, short, high, long positions, and it just, it will just kill you in terms of transaction costs. Okay, so there, there, is, there, there are different ways of dealing with it, theoretical and practical. Uh, there is a simple practical way, which is you kind of pretend that uh, and that you're hedging a, 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 an option, barrier option with a higher barrier, let's say B prime, uh, in which case your, your this function here would get here and the short position would never be active be below B, only above B, but once you're above B, you don't have to hedge anymore, the option is going to be zero. Uh, so so that, that's kind of a simple solution. This is going to be more expensive than the Black-Scholes hedging because you're hedging a more expensive options, option that pays all the way up to B prime and not just up to B. Ah, this, is, this is just a story uh, about barrier options. So it's not the, in the main part of the course, kind of just to you know, indicate there might be some interesting things going on once you talk about uh, non-vanilla uh, exotic options like barrier options. Now, there, there, is, there is also kind of historical anecdotes about trading and on, on barrier options, on underlyings, which were uh, small uh, assets which, which are, uh, and, and don't have a, a high trading volume. And then if you are a big investor uh, or big investors on opposite sides of, of the same barrier option contract, you can try to actually manipulate the stock by trading and moving the stock above, trying to push the stock above the barrier if you're on one side of the contract, or trying to keep the stock below the barrier if you're on the other side of the contract, uh, just uh, uh, so that you get money or don't lose money in the, in the option contract. Now, that's not modeled in the Black Scholes Merton model. In the Black Scholes Merton model, uh, there is no possibility of manipulation. No matter how you trade, you are not moving the price. Uh, but in reality, big invest, large investors, especially on, on smaller assets which are traded in smaller volumes, uh, they might be able to move the price. All right, that's all I'm going to say about barrier options. Agent options uh, mentioned early in the course uh, are options on the average of the stock of the underlying, uh, the average until maturity which are useful when the price of the underlying may be very volatile, like in energy electricity markets, where the price of electricity can, can vary very much from one day to another, then it makes sense to, to trade in Asian options uh, because averages are less volatile than a single 
than the value of the uh, electricity on a, on a single date. Also mathematically, uh, just to mention, actually there is no formula for, for these, uh, even European versions. Uh, in the Black-Scholes model, uh, the reason is the average you are adding stock prices over time, uh, adding exponential of Brown emotions, you get a sum of exponential of Brown emotion. Uh, there is no nice expression for the joint density of those, uh, and so you have to work with mathematically with Laplace or Fourier transforms of the uh, of the density, and then numerically computing the price of the options. They're actually kind of stable. There is no problems with Asian options in terms of hedging like this. There are no jumps or anything. It's, it's in a smoother than regular call and put options being averages. Uh, so, so no problem in, in, in actual hedging. Uh, uh, and when you're dealing with these options, very nice, very stable. But actually, mathematically, there is no, there is no nice expression for the price of those op options.